Just about sailing, April, part four of doing the rudder, sticking the two halves together and finishing it off. If you haven't seen the previous three parts, this will not make any sense to you at all. If you have seen the previous three parts, this might not make any sense at all. But anyway, let's, let's just get on with it and see what happens here. So um, here we go. So of course there's always the occasional unforced error and this plastic piping which is the stuff that I use to um, form this I thought wouldn't stick to the epoxy but it does, it sticks really well. So I use this to kind of shape this top bit which is very very hard for oformics with epoxy. Um, I, I didn't video it but I basically just put a bit of the pipe around and stuck that and now it's stuck like concrete so I'm going to have to actually um, sand that off which is a bit of a pain because if I'd known about that I could have waxed it or something but you know that's just carelessness on my part. Okay so I've got it clamped up more or less the way it will be once I put the foam in. It's threatening to rain again so that's the whole thing clamped up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw some lines on it because that's more or less what I well that's exactly where I want it to be um, and there's a little bit of fiddling but I better I better do something quite quick because as I say it's about to rain again. Yeah, the gap here along this edge, that's probably the worst bit, um, but I might, actually I think I'm going to add some more 404 on that before the final clamping up. This is not too bad, that can be sorted out. The edges have actually come out quite nice, let's have a look at the longer edge. So I, d I don't know how well this is going to come out, but the, the gap along here that's actually quite nice and I'm happy that that will clamp up quite nicely and not too much will squidge out. And this is the this is the bottom and as you can see I've, I've drawn the lines in here. This bit obviously is a big gap here but um, that's where I messed up putting that um, putting that pipe around it so I've got to do something else here to make that fine. It doesn't really matter that this edge is not brilliantly square because that's obviously going to have some filler in afterwards. Again this might be a little bit of overkill but um, those, those gaps I want to sort out a little bit, I thought they were actually too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some filler on this, um, prevent it from sticking together, clamp everything together so that I actually get a better fit between this skin and the one at the bottom. Um, I think I know how I'm going to do this. So, so what I've done, and I don't know how well this will come out, is I've put plastic over the areas that I want the um, epoxy to go onto, and then I'm going to put epoxy onto the actual the main thing uh, mixed with 404. Put this on the top. The plastic is obviously so that it doesn't stick. Uh, so I'll put 404 on, then peel ply, then put this on top, then clamp it, um, and that should give me a good kind of seal all the way around. Right, this is a bit difficult to video because I've set it up in a slightly awkward place, but as I say, I need to kind of address this gap somehow, so I need to kind of construct something as a bit of a mould around here. Um, and basically, it is really useful if you've got a well-organised epoxy space, which I have, I have with everything uh, sort of neatly labelled and um, put in place. I tend to keep a lot of kind of bits of plastic and things for forming and so on and you know they're all easily to hand. Um, I'm going to cut a hole in that and then that's kind of going to go over there and fit snugly against there so let's put this together and see if that works. Right so this has worked out quite nicely this, this fits on there nicely you can see there's a couple of gaps there um, I may or may not stick this around there to keep that shape. Right, so loads of um, epoxy with 4 or 4 um, Stuck some peel ply on it. Just going to put the top on, the top, the other side. And cross my fingers. Okay, so I have clamped this on, I've got the peel ply down, um, I'm just going to go around 
the edges where I should have put the camera on the other side so apologies for that where I can see this stuff sort of squidging through and make sure that there is a nice I'm going to put a sort of a fillet to be quite honest on here so, so hopefully this makes a, a bit more sense that that's where the gap was and I basically where it's squidged out a bit I've just smoothed a nice sort of fillet on there then folded this over now I'm going to clamp it quite lightly and then leave it for several hours I shall probably take all of this off before it dries completely just in case things have gone really wrong and I've accidentally glued these two pieces together without meaning to no need to fear it did separate nicely um, I'm not sure I think you can see it why I uh, if I explained really why I wanted to fill it there and it's basically so that when I put these two halves together that kind of this edge butts up against there and as you can see the gap along here is a lot closer than it was previously so that's kind of what I was aiming for right now I'm just procrastinating because um, I need to actually glue this stuff together um, what's the worst that could happen eh? Every one of you watching this screen, look out, because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theatre. No, you're right, absolutely nothing could possibly go wrong. Um, get more maths, I've done the maths. I've wetted out the edges. I'm just going to mix some stuff up and then everything happens at once. Right, so that bit wasn't speeded up. Um, I now have a few minutes to mix this up, which I've pre uh, put the right quantities in. Pour it into there, put the other bit on the top, clamp it, um, give it a quick clean around the edges. scary did I mention this was quite scary
do. This is where doing that extra bit of work along the top, I hope, really pays off because there's no fiddling about to match the lines up. The lines are beautifully matched up. <coughs> now although this is um, a low pressure foaming system I just feel that I want to get the clamps on as quickly as possible. I can put these on and then I could probably um, do a few little adjustments for bits and pieces. There's bits of epoxy squidging out obviously but I can take the clamps off one at a time and have a bit of an adjustment. But, um, oh and by the way I've got <coughs> remember to put the temperature up to button 23 this time so there shouldn't be a problem with this stuff actually going off. getting a good bit of squeeze coming out of here which pleases me no So this is where I wanted to be about halfway through the first video, by the way. So this is video number four, and it will be the final one. Because if this doesn't work, I'm going to go out and buy a rudder. Right. I may or may not put tape around this, duct tape around it. That was the plan, but it's sealed up so nicely. Um, I'm not totally sure. And see how that goes because the epoxy should start going off within about 60 minutes um, and I would expect to see something coming through the holes um, at about an hour and a half something like that so right the battery lasted let's switch that off I'll switch it back on when something exciting <laughs> happens but yeah, I know you know what I'm going to say now. Cup of tea. I think I deserve it. Do you know what? I really think I deserve it. What have I forgotten? Tell me what I've forgotten, quickly. You're all shouting something, aren't you? What is it? I must have forgotten something. Right, so here we are about 25 minutes in. And there is foam coming out of the holes, which is great. There's quite a lot of foam coming out of the holes, because what I did is I calculated the volume without taking the tangs into account because as I said during the first test I was not going to be short sure on this stuff. Now what is pleasing me particularly is that it is coming out the holes and it's not coming out of the joints. So what I can do, I put some tape across but I haven't put enough on so I might put some more on, but I can actually scrape this stuff off um, after an hour or so when it's finished expanding um, and then as I say leave it five hours put it in the hot box and yeah as you might have gathered by the fact that I was actually silent which is not one of my fortes for the first part where I was where I was preparing all this that I was getting slightly nervy but um, couldn't be happier fabulous good it's not over till it's over but that's far enough in the right direction for the moment. So let's have another look at my calculations because I didn't take the tangs into account so I thought oh should I that's probably because you need to make 10% for wastage more than you actually need 
So I did all the calculations properly and I have double checked my maths. Um, and I thought, well, I, I don't really need 10%. Perhaps, perhaps no extra. I'll, I'll work out what I need for 5% extra. And I thought, no, I'd rather have too much than too little. So I put in for 10% extra. And basically, yeah, it, that is 10% extra. So do you know what? It, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Because there were two things I was worried about. One was not having enough, and I've obviously got enough here because I made too much. And the second was whether it would squirt out through the sides, even though it's low density. This is about an hour and a half afterwards, so this has stopped expanding now. And it hasn't squirted outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because this is still soft, I'm going to just collect up the access, uh, wait for five hours, and then um, put it in the hot box. So, no harm done. Better too much than too little. Lovely, lovely, lovely job. Very, very happy with this. Very happy indeed. <laughs> you, can see, you can see how much too much I made. Uh, anyway, right. Okay. So the next time we see this, I'll be putting it in the hot box. Okay. So that's five and a half hours. Um, there's some little bits of um, foam, just very, very gently, sort of squeezing out, which which happened before. So I'm not too bothered about that. So I'm going to pop it in the box now. Gosh, this is heavy. <laughs> Right, so what it needs is um, a minimum of 40 degrees for six hours. I've given it 12 hours. And let's see what the temperature has been. Right, so current temperature is 44. Max was 46, minimum was 28.8, which is what I put it in at, so that's absolutely perfect. Um, there has been some further stuff coming out, which is absolutely fine. Um, and that is absolutely rock solid, so I can sand that off. Um, and on to the next stage, which we'll cover quite quickly because it's very basic, sort of sanding of this down, fiberglassing it, barrier coating it, etc. So this is the boring bit. It didn't explode, which I'm sure is what you're all waiting for. I kind of was, even though I knew it wasn't going to. Got a bit of work to do to, to neaten these ends here. Um, I've given this a preliminary sand down. I'm probably not going to do much more than that. I'm going to fill it in because there's a few little sort of divots and holes and things um, before I glass it. Uh, this is that's one of the holes where the stuff oozed out. Um, so yeah, it's really just finishing off, wrapping it up with fiberglass, um, barrier coating it, painting it, and we're done. So here we go, this is the finishing off bit. So uh, this, is the, this is the trailing edge, and I'm quite happy with this. I've got to, got to sand this down, obviously but I used the same method that I did on the leading edge, which is I put loads of 404 on it, um, put the peel ply over the top, and then I sort of went over it with a small pipe, and it's given me a nice sort of curved edge, so I'm hoping that I only have to kind of sand the sides, and most of this will be okay. It's not perfectly level, as you can easily see, but you know what, that's a lot better than I thought I was going to be able to do, and I'm very, very pleased with that.
So is it perfect? No, absolutely not. But is it a thousand times better than I ever thought I could get do? Yeah, definitely. That is really nicely sort of curved and, and finished and shaped around there. So as I say, it's a lot better than I thought I was going to be able to do it. So um, uh, there we go. Let's get on with the glass fibre work. Right, so here's a bit that I'm not desperately comfortable with and that's putting fibre glass on this. Um, it's a bit like wrapping a big present, and I'm not very good at wrapping presents. Um, so I'm going to do it in several stages. I'm going to do the ends for the bottom and the top first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one piece of fiberglass on that's kind of the same size, not overlapping. And then another one that does overlap the sides. This is more or less the right size and I'm trying to dab this rather than sort of pull it because I don't want to stretch it. And then the second thickness with, with quite a big overlap actually but it's one of these very rare occasions where more is more. Right, so when I say I don't like the fiberglassing part, I'm really talking about the wrapping. Um, and what I wanted to try and do is to make it so there's only one seam. So my original idea was to kind of, and I want two layers, to kind of wrap the surrounding in a circle like that. Oh, I just saw that is too difficult. So my compromise, and that would have been an absolute disaster, fun to watch maybe, but a disaster. My compromise is to do it this way. So um, instead of one continuous sheet, I'm going to have four sheets. So the first ones to go on are these um, orange ones and you can see where there's kind of an overlap, I've kind of exaggerated this and then put on these. So it means there's only sort of two seams and the trouble is this four butt joints. Now if those butt joints go very well, which they won't, um, it means that I won't have to do any filling or very little filling. So anyway, let's. Um, I'm not going to show you loads of fiberglassing because there'll be loads of fiberglassing when I get to do the windows later on in the next few months or so. So let's get the fiberglass on. I'm certainly not going to show any more fiberglassing because that's just basic. But just to say, that as with everything, a paper pro forma, even to cut out the peel fly and the two slightly different sized pieces of fiberglass and also I want to show the fact that we've actually got a few days of nice weather so I'm doing fiberglassing outside. So there we go it's all peel flied and smoothed down very very nicely. Um, beautiful. So as I say it's really nice to be able to do this stuff outdoors. Right so let's come back to it when all the fiberglass is on and we'll do a bit of fairing. Right very blustery day hopefully not too much wind noise. Um, as you can see the plan was that this should be all delightfully smooth and these little marks uh, were where I was supposed to line things up and I didn't really line them up very well. So that's not too bad a ridge but there's a bit of a ridge there so I'm going to put some filler in. Obviously this edge needs filler but I'm going to put some filler in across the sort of middle bit, smooth that down and then ready for the finale. I've only put a bit down the middle. Um, 
and around the edges here to just to get this sort of smoothed off. So I don't want it, I don't want, don't want it, I don't need it to be perfect. Um, I don't particularly want to feel absolutely everything. So let's give this a bit of a sanding and then onto the barrier coat. Right, so this is slightly precarious, actually it's not precarious, but it looks a bit precarious. This is hung up, that's all been sanded down, um, ready for about four or five or possibly six um, coats of epoxy. I might show you some of that, but it's um, literally just uh, putting some epoxy on, waiting for it to go tacky, putting another coat on, let's just roll it on. Okay, so this is just absolutely box standard. Hardener resin mix. As I say, about four coats of this, possibly five coats. We are in the home straight now. Um, just going to wash off the emin blush, give it a little very light sand down, sanding down, and look at that. You can you can actually see the reflection in there. This is um, now I've been look I've been <laughs> I've been looking for an opportunity to use the word shiny um, on this channel for a very long time for reasons that will be obvious to some of you. So I have to say, this is really shiny, very shiny. So I put one coat of Primacon on it, which is, uh, this will go on pretty much anything, whether it's metal, wood, um, fiberglass, it'll go on top of old anti-foul, and it's a sort of a specialist uh, anti-foul primer. There will be more coats going on um, once everything else is put together, but um, for the time being, that is it. So, I've had to come inside to film this last bit because um, the wind noise was getting really bad and the battery on my uh, microphone went down, which is why there's a bit of wind noise in this thing. But anyway, here we go. We are finished. That is the rudder done. As I say, more coats of this stuff going on. Um, I will be putting it on the boat soon. Um, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty chuffed with that. I think that's going to be pretty solid. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm going to leave it there for this video, because these videos have just been going on forever and ever and ever. And um, the next video, I'll try and get one out in a couple of weeks' time. We'll have a bit of catch-up on other projects and so on that have been going on, and other ones that I'm starting about to start. Um, but do feel free to comment. If you've got any questions or anything, as I say, this is not a how to do it, this is just how I did it. So if you want to comment, if there are any questions, I'll do a bit of a wrap-up next time and talk about what I would have done different, which is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, hopefully you won't see another one of another rudder video from me for about forty years. So um, until next time, which hopefully will be fairly early in May. Uh, thanks for watching. See you then. Bye.